Hello everyone and welcome back to more Root Double Before Crime After Days. In the last episode we had a raging fire in one of the sections of the, of the building. Unfortunately we were unable to quell the fire. We almost died in the process. And But luckily there was light at the end of the tunnel because searching through maps and stuff we found out there might be some more AD because we have none. There's like a storage facility in between um, sections, so we gotta hopefully we can get to it. And hopefully, there's some left. But as you can see, we have smoke and heat here in the hallway. That's not good. Fortunately, there wasn't any fire from what he could see, but he could hear the sound of a roaring inferno coming from just past the corner up ahead. When she heard that, Kazami spoke with a frozen look on her face. <laughs> Yeah, Kazami's not doing too hot right now because she only took half a dose. Yeah. Watasi walked down the connecting passageway, accompanied by Kazami. The latter held a fire hose at the ready. The air grew hotter with every step they took, and the roar of the flames gradually became louder and louder. They finally went past the corner and saw. A world swirling with hellfire. Kazami immediately switched the hose on to get hosing down the flames. But no matter how hard she tried to put it out, the force of the fire didn't weaken in the slightest. Otasu stood his ground amidst the heat waves and steam as he stared closely at the blazing flames. The fire was about 5 meters wide, and on the other side of it was a security gate that led to Area 3. We need to get there because that's where the place that's where the place is at. It's about the same distance as that puddle I jumped over earlier. Then it wasn't impossible for him to pull this off. Kazami shouted as soon as she noticed Watasi backing up in preparation for a running start. <laughs> Watasi said that, then jumped off the ground with a three-step running start. Did he make it? And right after that, his vision was engulfed in fire. His hair and skin were instantly scorched. But right as he gnashed his teeth to endure the pain, his body cleared the flames and landed in front of the gate. I did what I had to. Kazami was screaming at him, but he had no time to turn around. Damn, that burns! Tossi was in the middle of a white hot world full of stagnant air heated by flames. Get your breath, if you don't, your lungs will be burned. His brain assessed the danger and sent him a stern warning. It'll be okay, I can handle a little heat. Tossi convinced himself of that as he quickly took out the security card. Once he opened the gate, he could breathe all he wanted in Area 3. Then all he had to do was run to the engine room and restore the sprinkler system. And that take care of the fires in the little bow. I've got this. With that confidence brimming inside of him, Watasi slid the card into the terminal. But the gay didn't respond in the slightest. At that moment, his spine went so cold that it was nearly impossible to believe he was surrounded by flames. No. This can't be. Are, are you kidding me? Watasi tried putting the card in the slot again, his hands trembling as he did, but nothing changed. Shit, the terminal's completely busted. Watasi turned around in terror. He gazed at the sea of flames standing in his way. And at that moment he forgot his situation and instinctively took a breath. His lungs burned. His lungs were scorched even further with every cough, if they could even be called that at this point, he took. I can't, can't breathe. Kazami turned to the fallen Watasi and desperately screamed at him, but he could no longer even understand what she was saying. His vision dimmed and before long he saw her no more. So, eh? Damn it! 
I should have listened to Tachibana. At that moment, Otasi's body was doused by a hose's jet stream. It seemed like Kazami had rushed into the flames with the hose in hand. Otasi still managed to weave together a thought in his fading consciousness. Forget it, Tachibana. Just forget about me and go join the others. And as he worried about Kazami risking her life to save a fool like him, Atasi fell into a deep darkness at the end of suffering. Well. That's a problem because, uh, yeah. You may be able to avert this fate by setting Kazami's senses higher than Ina's at the SSS input just before this ending. Well. Hmm. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I made the choice. Um, basically, we're all going to go as a group. Instead of splitting up, that's what screwed us up. Everyone should download this map in your PDAs. Yeah. Everyone took out the PDAs like a zombie declaration, except for Yuri. Yuri has <laughs> PDA. At any rate, everyone except for Yuri downloaded the map into the PDA. Yukita took the knife, Otasi then popped a hand on his shoulder. The group left the control room. The group headed from Area 4 to Area 3's inner ring. While en route, they looked over their newfound maps. They heard as they talked. They were now in the connecting passageway from Area 3's inner ring to its outer ring, the one whose door had failed to open earlier. Watasi tried a security card just to be sure, but it didn't respond. You could have took out the army knife and used it to start fiddling with the card slot. Then maybe best to try the other route as well. Otasi looked at Kazama as he thought that, but she was rubbing her arms. That's not good. Tasi started panicking, and it wouldn't. He didn't realize it up until this point, but it had been 45 minutes since the last injective of AD. Let's touch Ibana's cumulative exposure right now. If that damage AD's effect didn't fully manifest, does that mean she can only handle under 2000 MSV? But we don't have a single AD on us right now. At this rate, we'll all. Ukita-san, Shuri, Kawaroka? Moribe. And it's Kazami said that. Yuri suddenly spoke up from behind them all. <laughs> Smoke. Otasi turned around as soon as he heard that. <laughs> Yuri had pointed the center of the passageway when... <laughs> the floorboards were blown away and fire came jetting out of them. There was a fire hydrant right by the gate. June promptly took a fire hose out of it and handed the nozzle to Kazami. Deja vu, much? 
The zombie turned to the advancing flames and began hosing them down. However, more floorboards were blown away. One flame after another kept spurting out of them. You could how fast can you get that crowd rate up? Because it's gonna have to be sometime between now and like three seconds from now. Even with Kazami in a weakened state, the flames were progressing slowly, so it seems she was doing her best. I wonder how he works under pressure. <laughs> Hina followed her advice and held Yuri in her arms. She then crouched down and started shouting. Damn it, man. This is no time to doubt yourself. It wasn't just Ina, everybody was speechless. Okay. I'll allow that word use. June kicked the gate. And at that moment, debris from the ceiling <laughs> fell from the ceiling. Tassi looked up, then stared intently at what lay there. <laughs> Tassi quickly scanned the path of the duck. They apparently went right over the gate and straight into the outer ring. I didn't remember what Yuki had said earlier. The air ducts have radioactive material filters set up all over them. They block all potential routes to the surface in other areas. Then maybe there isn't a filter and they're blocking the way to the outer ring. But the air duct was blocked by a great, great. Okay, what do we got here? Um, this is fine. It better be fine. I don't want another game over. I was doing so well, too. June took the army knife from Yukita. Teamwork, I like it. Look at that. Oh man, look at all that fire. Watasi then lifted June on his shoulders, allowing her to be dis begin dismantling the grate. Screws soon began falling, first one, then two, then three, and four. Finally, the grate itself fell. It had only taken a mere 30 seconds. I like it. June left those words behind. She climbed into the air duct in the blink of an eye. But the flames behind them had only grown fiercer during this time. Because I'm groaned in pain as heat waves surged from the fire. Please hurry. We oh my god, hurry. Hopefully she can open that gate. Nina still had her arms wrapped around Yuri. And as Watasi also prayed for the same thing from the bottom of his heart. Security gate open. That's a good sound, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's such a good sound. I like that sound. Yata! Never thought I'd feel so wonderful about a door opening in my life. Joy filled the group's faces all at once. But something was strange. On the other side of the gate was full of smoke and June was nowhere to be seen. <coughs> Where'd she go? An ominous feeling took grip of Watasi, so he quickly scanned the area. Moribe! And spotted June lying on the floor. Moribe, どうした? Watasi frantically ran over to June and shook her body. But she didn't respond no matter how much he called out to her. Her eyes were rolled back. She'd clearly lost consciousness. Instinctively sensing danger, Watasi took June in his arms and ran back to the passageway. Oh no. Yuri and Ina groaned in agony and collapsed on top of each other. Yuri! Sensei! Three of them had collapsed one after another. Kazami ran over after having noticed this unexpected turn of events. Her face then went pale as a sheet. Uh oh. 
一種の窒性ガスです火災等により空気中の酸素濃度が極度に低下すると発生するんです吸えば陸にいながら溺れるような状態になり意識は断絶 You could, start, you could have then start shouting in a shrill voice after hearing that. まずいここも空調が壊れてて換気が追いついていないんだじゃあ外周島にはそのガスが充満して The gas had been sealed in the outer ring so far because the gate had been closed up until this point. But now. これじゃ進めない To make matters worse, their way back was blocked by fire. I mean, talk about being stuck in a rock in a hard place. There's nowhere to run. If Otasi, Kazami, and Yukida were about to lose con- were able to also to lose consciousness, it would probably wouldn't be long before they were incinerated by the flames. They'd be fine if they could put out the source of the fire, but they didn't know where it was. <laughs> Kazami scrunched her face in deep thinking for a second. Then she made up her mind and spoke. エンジンルームまでの距離は約30メートルくらいです。無酸素運動でも問題ないはず。だが倒れた人たちはどうする ?We can't leave him here. 椿山さんは私が担ぎます。隊長は森部とユーリさんを。I'm supposed to carry two people? Two people? Fine, I'll do it. Hang on, let me save the game. Just in case. I'm supposed to run and hold my breath while carrying two people? That worry crossed his mind for a second, but Kazami saw through Watasi's concerns and quickly appended her statement. Her voice filled Watasi's spirit with fire. He felt self conscious well up in him. We can do this. We're not a quitter. Kazami smiled for a second, then grew stern again and continued. Ukita-san, I'm sorry, but you can go on your own. I'm sorry, let's do it. I'm sorry. Kazami propped Ina up on her shoulder at the same time she said this. Watasi did the same with Jun, making sure to copy the way Kazami did it. He then held Yuri with his other hand. So light. The two of them combined had to weigh about 100 kilograms. Yet they felt light to Watasi. The three nodded at each other, then started racing down the connecting passageway. They held their breath through the hallways full of white smoke and oxygen deficient air. Smoke stung their eyes, causing them to tear up. It's far. He'd only, tra- he'd only traveled 30 meters, but it felt extraordinarily long to him. But the weight of two lives he bore gave Watasi strength. If we fail, then the, it's over. I've got to hang in there. If I faint, then Yuri Moribe die too. As he kicked off the ground with those thoughts sprinting through him. Because I mean, suddenly stopped in front of a room. Did we make it? Because I mean, took a card out of her pocket and inserted it into the slot. Oh, thank God. The group filed into the room right when the door opened. There was a ladder in there, just as Yukida had said. In the air there hadn't been polluted at all, thank God. Watasi quickly closed the door and took a huge breath. <laughs> oh, beautiful air. <laughs> Kazami and Yukida were also struggling to catch their breath. <laughs> oh no, but Yukida fell to his knees with a thud. Yukita-san, are you alright? Damn it. But none of the guests had gotten into the room. They were safe for the time being, but Matasi realized they weren't out of the woods just yet. The AD won't last much longer. According to his watch, it was currently 11 10 a.m. Not only there were just six minutes left until the prior dosage dwarf, but they didn't have any AD at all. We're screwed. Is there anything we can do? The manual said there should be spare AD in Area 3. It was very probable that it was in the outer ring. But they couldn't search the area with the gas starting to f- st- still fill in the hallways. And before we can do that, we have to find out what's keeping the sprinkler system off, reactivate it, and put out the source of the fire. Wait for the ventilation to finish, then look for the AD. It's useless. That'll take way too long. But 
taking their time was simply not an option. Okay. Oh wow. Um, I'll put it one max. Even if they got rid of the gas and restored the sprinkler system, it'd be for naught if they couldn't find AD. Everyone here would probably die. No, wait. If I die looking for the AD, then it'd all be for nothing. Even if they went looking for the AD after restarting the sprinkler system, that might not take as much time as expected. And then they wouldn't have to go very long without any AD. The cumulative exposure probably wouldn't increase all that much. Should I prioritize my own safety and look towards precautions? Or should I brave the danger to find the AD for everyone? Ooh, what do, oops, oops, what do I do? Ooh, ooh, what do we do? What's my name? There I am. God. I don't know. Should we brave the dangers or should we wait it out? Time is not an option though. I can't afford to wait. We're gonna do it. Tossy silently gazed at the door. A whole hall full of potentially lethal gas was just lying there. Just one sniff of it and he would most likely pass out. No, it's way too dangerous. Tossy then wrung his answer out of his throat. Yeah. I think that would have worked if I lowered everyone's else a little bit. So that way I would brave it, but I guess because I left it all at max it didn't matter. So it was prioritize safety over foolishness. Because let's be honest, we were probably going to die anyway. Thank you. Thank you. The three of them picked up their fallen companions, headed deeper into the room, then climbed the ladder. Seven hours left. Can we make it? Who knows? Who knows? You know what, I'm gonna leave the video off here, so we can start chapter three in the next episode. Take it easy, everybody.